Good morning, everyone. So by the time you are watching this, it might be afternoon or evening when I edit this, but I'm very excited about this Remarkable announcement. And if you don't know, I've made a lot of content on the Remarkable, and I do a lot of e-ink stuff as well as long-term reviews. I've uh, stayed off social media, talked a little bit about yesterday in a video about what we think might be. We're thinking it might be color. I might not show the whole thing, I might just show parts that I think are relevant for fair use and whatnot. But without further ado, let's get into the event. What is killing our ability to focus? In an era where we rely heavily on technology to accomplish our tasks, our capacity for got a big heartbeat going. Is challenged. How can we reclaim our attention and ability to think deeply? Remarkable's always been good at kind of marketing. Hello, and welcome to Remarkable. For more than a decade, we've created human-centric technology, tools that help you capture, refine, and elevate your thoughts in a world full of distractions. In 2017, we defined the paper tablet category with the launch of Remarkable One. In 2020, we made the paper tablet mainstream with Remarkable Two. And today, we're redefining the paper tablet again. All right, here we go. Oh, yep, there's color. Ooh, that looks like a... Okay, really quickly, that looks like a palm nib on it, like this uh, V Woods I'm testing right now. They have a harder nib. Interesting. Let's let's see. Yeah, definitely different nib. Oh, 11.8 inches. Okay, 11.8 inches. That's interesting. So when Kit, I, I interviewed Kit about features he'd like to see on a Remarkable 3. He mentioned like A4 color, uh, which this isn't A4, it's a little smaller, but I guess that rumor was, was right on. Huh. The color on, on top as well, if you want. And I would love to see, you know, we were talking about drawing it earlier. I would love to see an A4 color, Remarkable. So I think they do a fabulous job of it. Other people make that decision well. I don't need color, it's for, it's for words. I'm gonna stick with the Pro A5 black and white. You know, I, I don't see Remarkable having a massive range of different products anytime soon. But what I do think that they will have to do is they'll have to have more regular releases. Oh, did you see that? So they got a little flap kind of like the, the book series has. The Remarkable Marker, I've lost almost a million times. I gave it to a friend once and he lost one. So that's good to see. Looks like they probably have a different type folio than, than this one because it is a different size. I wonder if this is going to become irrelevant or if when a Remarkable 3 comes out that this is still going to be useful for that. But that one's definitely proprietary. Should probably be a little bit more comfortable because it's a little bit bigger. Is our next generation paper tablet. There's a revolutionary color display for more expressive notes. An adjustable reading light so you can work comfortably anytime, anywhere. And an even better paper light. Oh, they added a front light. In my uh, Remarkable 3 wishlist video, that was one of my, my biggest requests for them. It'll be interesting to see, though, if they, they add uh, more distance between the pen and the <clears throat> kind of screen here, because that's one thing that a front light does add. Here to help me tell you about Paper Pro is Remarkable's founder, Magnus Von Berg. Magnus, congratulations. Thanks a lot. This is something that is so special to the company because our users have been asking us for years, when can we get a color experience on the Remarkable? When can we get a front light so we can use this product in dimly lit situation? And today uh, we can finally say with Paper Pro, we can do those things. The interface for the user is simplified. The distractions go away. That is something I will give Remarkable a lot of credit for because I've tried Super Notes, Kindles, uh, VWood, you know, other other kind of things in the category, and Remarkable is just like 
I would feel confident giving that to anyone and them just being able to figure it out. That's something they've started with and I've had the Remarkable 1, the Remarkable 2, and that's something they've had from the beginning. And I think that's why they've excelled so well. And, you know, some people are really disciplined. They can sit down on a computer, focus on a single task for hours on end, ignore the notifications, don't go procrastinating online. And I admire those people. I'm not one of those people myself. But I am not either. And if you're watching this, then maybe you aren't either, which is one of the benefits of Remarkable, for sure. And just, I mean, the Z Ink tablets in general are good at that, but Remarkable excels more in that, I think. Very hopeful and excited to get Paper Pro out in the world. And I think it's going to change even more lives. And that feels fantastic. Let's take a closer look. Looks Paper pretty Pro thin. introduces the 11.8 inch canvas color display. Our latest custom made display stack. This is the first color display on a remarkable paper tablet, and it's the first in the industry to offer a true color experience. All right, so like I mentioned yesterday, I don't think that Gallery or Galley 3 and Kaleido 3 are good enough for a remarkable standard, so I'm assuming this is going to be like an advanced paper display that they've custom tuned with, with e-ink or they've worked on themselves to have a uh, better experience. It starts with a surface of durable textured glass we designed it in tandem with our new longer lasting markers for a writing experience that feels and even sounds just like writing on paper. Just listen. This is a digital paper display. Okay, so it might not be a palm nib, but it sounds like they said they have surface textured glass. So that could be what's making most of the sound, even though the nib's a little harder. And they said longer lasting, which palm nibs generally are. So it reflects natural light for a more comfortable reading experience. But in dim lighting conditions, just turn on the reading light to work comfortably without eye strain. Inside this display are millions of tiny colored ink particles that move around when you write with your marker. You can write in nine different colors, but you can also use the new shader tool to layer and blend colors. And when you're reading PDFs and eBooks, the display can render thousands of colors. You have never experienced a display like this before. It's an experience that's brand new on a digital device, but yet it feels familiar somehow, like a newspaper is being printed right before your eyes. And even though we've added color and the front light, we've actually managed to reduce the distance between the marker tip and the ink to less than one millimeter. This ensures that the writing experience remains. Okay, so that's cool. They definitely use a custom front light there, I think, because they said that it reduced the distance between the paper and the actual kind of texture here. When I talked to Brandon and Kit about like front lights and stuff, I think our consensus was that they wouldn't do it because it would increase the distance between the, the paper and the pen, but seems like they've found a way to decrease it. And so that's like the only argument against a front light was sometimes that it, the writing experience isn't as good, but that's no longer the case. And you can make it yours with our new line of accessories, including Bookfolio, which comes in six different colors and finishes. Kit and I had talked about like them launching accessory lines. It doesn't look like they, they really did that, but they have six colors now, which is nice. I think that before they only had the, the regular folio, the slot in one, and then the two leather ones. And there are so many ways Remarkable can transform your workflow. Use the desktop app to import that long report or email to your paper tablet, then read and annotate it without any distraction or eye strain. Note down new ideas on the go with the mobile app, so you later on can elevate those thoughts with focus and clarity on your Remarkable. Keep the app is something that Remarkable nails. Supernote has an app too, a companion app. I think this uh, VWoods has like a QR system where you can transfer stuff between them. But the Remarkable app, I think is, personally I use it the most when I'm cross, you know, transferring from devices. And it's just seamless, like the desktop app and the mobile app and the internet browser kind of uh, web interface that you can use are all just very unified. And if you're still wondering, does Remarkable actually help me think better? We worked with a team of neuroscientists to find out.
most Norwich workers feel that they are often distracted at work. And many experience that work-related stress spills over into their personal lives. When we get distracted, it affects everything we do. Our concentration, creative thinking, problem solving, memory, and even decision making. Studies have shown that even a single notification can distract you for over 20 minutes. This is cool. I like that they brought in some specialists because they're just kind of reaffirming the stuff that we've been talking about for years with scientific backup. I don't think it's any mystery or like everyone knows that these things are true, but um, Remarkable is good at marketing and that's a really good way to, to emphasize that. So we conducted a study comparing how people respond to working on different tasks on Remarkable versus a PC. The results are striking. When performing a single task, users felt 35% less stressed working on a Remarkable. And their brains were 30% more efficiently compared to working on a PC. And this is substantial. PCs are disruption devices that overload us with distractions. Remarkable, however, makes it easier to dedicate your attention to one task. That's certainly true. I'm surprised they didn't mention, like with the computer aspect of it, the blue light thing, because that's known to suppress your melatonin production, which can inevitably lead you to fall asleep later at night. I think that would have been a pretty strong case to include there too. But that has been known, I guess, for longer. And to add on that, uh, some companies, they put out new products every year just to put out the new product. We wanted the next step uh, for paper tablet to be meaningful and significant. So we worked over four years to develop a really step change for users and what, uh, what they experience with a paper tablet. The latency, I'm sure that's something they'll kind of uh, work on. Uh, they didn't give any numbers there, but I'm assuming it's gonna be significantly better than the Remarkable 2 because it's been out for four years now. Yeah, I think there's probably still a Remarkable 3 coming at some point because this can definitely use a higher PPI and uh, also lower latency and you know more RAM, more storage, but uh, that's obviously not gonna come very soon because this is uh, hot on the heels of the announcement of the Pro here. With the rapid development of AI, what's Remarkable doing? We have looked into it. We think there are some exciting opportunities uh, to create powerful features for our users using technologies um, from the AI space but our focus first and foremost is on the human experience and augmenting that and human thinking. Phil, there are a lot of productivity. That's a smart PR answer because, you know, AI is a, is a hot topic right now and it's kind of a, a catchphrase, like the AI paper here. The books tablets have it too. You know, the human kind of interface is what Remarkable has been strong at. So it's, I think it's wise for them to focus on that and then transition to useful AI features that like, you know, things like maybe global search and all that, that they can implement down the line and have it be very useful for you. It's in the feeling, the sound, the freedom of it, just like writing on paper, but something entirely new. Thoughts are limitless. I need a place to capture them, somewhere they can gather grow. I want something that can hold me in the moment. So I am focused. Nothing steals my attention. Slowing down actually gets me to where I want to be. Faster. Everything comes together. When you feel so close to your work, progress comes naturally, intuitively. I know exactly where everything is. So my work can move forward, no matter where I am. Making the most out of my mind. Whenever I needed to. All right, well, pretty cool. The color looks good. It looks kind of like colored pencil on paper. I'm surprised they didn't talk about the stylus more. I have some questions about that and I'm curious about that, so I might look that up really quickly. 
it's clear why they've been quiet for a while. They've been working on this advanced paper display that's uh, clearly a game changer in the e-ink space and pretty exciting to, to see. Another question that I have is whether or not they're gonna keep users that were grandfathered in to the subscription account still grandfathered. Uh, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like the people that have been supporting you since day one, it's a very small user base, but I think they probably upset some people if they force them to start using the Connect subscription. If you've been like a user since 2017, like I have. So that'll be um, something that I, I got to research. I'm sure there's way more info online about this, but I, I tried to stay off social media so I could watch this fresh and get a, a proper reaction here. All right, so after I've looked at some stuff online, there's no fingerprint sensor, it didn't look like. I still saw a guy putting in his passcode. That is a little bit of a missed mark, I think. They, uh, they could have added that. Um, although the screen will be better, so putting your pin is not gonna be as annoying. It's not gonna be as annoying as doing it on the Remarkable 2, because that can miss stroke sometimes and be not as responsive as you'd like. But like the view woods, I've been kind of using the, the fingerprint and it's just super nice. It looks like the stylus is an active stylus. I'm not, so it's not Wacom. I mean, I guess that makes sense because with the color tech, probably to distinguish the colors it's pulling, probably to distinguish the like CMYK colors that it's pulling, it probably needs to have an active stylus. It maybe it just doesn't work with the Wacom stylus. Uh, I'm not sure, I have to do some more research on that. Uh, but the other thing is, I wonder how it's gonna be with ghosting. Uh, in the specs here, it doesn't say anything about a GPU. It might not have anything like a super refresh that Books has, but I, I would imagine if they've been working on this for four years, they probably improved that a lot. And the other thing I noticed is it's pretty heavy. It's a big, it's 1.16 pounds. That's getting close to like the daylight, uh, the DC one in terms of uh, kind of weight. And then 5.1, so it's just a little bit thicker than the Remarkable 2. And 20,000 colors. I think Kaleido 3 is like around, uh, what is it? I think it's like 4,096 or something like that. So that's actually really cool. And that's why I think the colors look so good in the promotional uh, material. And then another thing is the PPI only went up three PPI. So I guess slightly better. You see 226 to 229 here, which is... I guess welcome, but it's not the 300 that, that people kind of wanted. But then again, this is a whole new display tech, so you can't really be uh, too judgmental on the PPI there. But what I was saying about the 20,000 colors is that's significantly more than Kaleido 3, as uh, you can see here. You get colors, but there's an RGB matrix in the front, and so they're using uh, much better tech here. The pen to ink distance has reduced as you can see here. And battery life is much larger, but it's a larger device as well. So that makes sense that it needs a large battery. And then charging speed. This is one of my gripes with the RM2. It's pretty slow. So um, zero to 90 reduced by 30 minutes. That's great. They octupled or eight times the internal storage, which is good. To be fair, you can't really put a lot of stuff on here. So it's, you know, 32 probably would have been fine, but 64 is good, definitely good to see that. Okay, so Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, and Dropbox, that's big. That's been something that's, that's kind of been an annoyance. And then I wonder if they're still gonna do the converting your handwritten notes into type text in the cloud, or if that's gonna be done locally on the device, now that it has a, a stronger device. 1.8 quad core, that's good. Oh, here's document support. Uh, yeah, no, it's not gonna support comics, which that's, I think, a little bit of a miss because now that you have color, comics would look so dope on this thing. Hopefully someone will hack it. It'd be really cool if with like the active stylus, they made cheaper ones that were just tuned to like one color and then you could have almost like colored pencils, have like the green pen, pull it out, use that, switch quickly. Uh, 
maybe a pipe dream. <laughs> Anyways, another thing is the price. I just spec'd one out on like a very basic kind of plan and it's 718. Like if I were gonna get the type folio and a better weave or like a leather one, that's you're pushing over a thousand or a little under a thousand maybe, depending on what you get. So yeah, it's expensive. Like if you have an RM2, you really need to question if you wanna upgrade for this, like with the color, that's the main feature here and the larger size and maybe the better writing experience and the, the front light. And I guess the ball's kind of in Rada's court now where they will launch the A5X too soon. They said it's coming this month, but we haven't heard an announcement of it yet. Maybe they were waiting on this announcement. They knew maybe it was coming or something, but that will be very interesting. And I've heard rumors that it is gonna be 300 PPI and 10.7 inches. So my guess is it's gonna be Carta 1300, which I put out a video about yesterday. And that will be the bigger brother to the Nomad here, the A6X2. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, certainly a very cool like technological project that they've gone through these past four years. Let me know if you'll be getting one. And uh, I put out a video of Carta 1300 up here, so you can check that out if you wanna see that and see the kind of the latest tech in the black and white screens that this V Woods AI paper has here. And let me know if you like this reaction style video. This is my first time doing it, so I'm not sure if that's something you guys will enjoy. Bye.